Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the next live stream in our songwriting feedback series. What is this, number five now? In this series, we will read and listen to a song from a new musical submitted by a member of our community. And then I will provide feedback through my feedback process. The same one we use in everything in the collective, in all of my courses, reading series, all that stuff. Slightly altered because the writer is not here with me live, but we will still make do nonetheless. Our song today is a second song from the composer lyricist Carson Bollinger and his gothic monster theme show. The song is called Van Helsing's Story. I think you can see where this is going. This song brings up a number of questions I often receive from writers about the use of story songs in musicals and uh, how it also asks how we can make Stories told through a song format, interesting, captivating, and an integral part of the larger story of the musical on the whole. How much information do we really need versus how much dramatic in interest can we infuse? When it's a story that the audience is familiar with as well, how can we tell it in a way that serves a story but is also concise? And how can we have characters use story songs as a way to convince another character of something? So as a convincing song, does that differ from a standard convincing song? All these are great questions, so let's dive in and find out. So here we go, here we go. I'm very excited about this. Um, not only because I love gothic horror series and things but also because this is fun and interesting to do a second song from our our writer here from carson so as always what we begin with in our feedback process is hearing from the writer first they get to give us context on the song as well as what they're looking for perhaps they want to say that before the share or after the share and then we will go through and we will actually listen to the song i'll share my screen we'll read along it'll be great then from there, what we will do normally is I'll toss it back to the writer to speak first after hearing the share. We don't have them live with us today, so we will instead be just reminding of what we're lo looking for, what they were interested in hearing feedback on. And then I start with an affirmative process, talking about the, the positive reflections from the song, what I think is working toward the goals, and then we dive into further feedback and critique. So that's how it's going to go. Here, here we are. Let's talk about the context. So Carson says, uh, same show, meaning the, I think it was what, our third song in the feedback series or second song. Um, so same show as that song. And uh, this is where Victor, the character Victor, visits Professor Van Helsing for monster hunting advice. Okay. The goal of the piece is to tell the story of Dracula in a very summarized manner and ultimately to convince Victor to kill his own monster. Ooh, great. So both summarizing story and convincing. Once again, he says, uh, in terms of what he's interested in getting feedback on, he says, once again, lyric help. But also, is the piano part too empty? The bass line is often just stand alone quarter notes, something for us to note. Is this something an orchestrator could help me with? Is it too beginning piano E? All good questions, very good questions to keep in mind. Anything else relevant that we need to know? He says, Frankenstein's monster, it's his dad. Ooh, interesting. So this is this is not Victor then as in Victor Frankenstein. This is Victor Frankenstein's monster's son. Named Victor. Woo! That's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Anything else that we need to know? Content warning, potentially, maybe violence, question mark, was, was written on there. So if you are particularly um, uh, 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 spicy when it comes to, to violence, perhaps you want to leave this out. But also, like, hi, here we are. It's a monster musical. So, of course, this can be violence. It's monsters. Um, all right, let's dive in. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and sound here so you can see the sheet music I'm looking at and we are going to be able to listen. That's what I'm doing over here on Zoom. We love to do it. Okay. Here we are. Brilliant. So hopefully you can now see my screen. Pretty sure you can. 
So uh, this is Van Helsing's story. We're going to go ahead and go for a listen. Here we go, friends. That's interesting. Ha. Huh. Okay. So. Ooh. Huh. Normally, we would go straight back to our writer here. Um, I have to stop my screen share for one moment. My computer is giving me a weird little signal. Okay, I will share again in a moment when we are taking a look back at that she music. But um, first things first, as a reminder of the context of the goals here, we have <clears throat> goal of the piece is to tell the story of Dracula in a very summarized manner, ultimately to convince Victor to kill his monster. Okay, most interested in getting feedback on the lyric. Um, is the piano part too empty? Baseline is often just quarter notes. Is this something an orchestra could help him with? And is it too begin beginning piano y? Uh, so those are the things that we are taking a look at specifically here today. All right, with all of that in mind, let's dive into some affies first. I like this a lot, just generally to start with. I like the tone of it. There's something truly haunting about it. Even though this is Van Helsing, we all know who Van Helsing is. Telling this tale, you can kind of hear there's... It's not exactly pride that he has in it. What the music is doing both in its kind of like mid, mid keyboard sparseness but also with a drive but also tonally speaking keeping us in a minor feel and letting the melody work against the chords that the piano is playing at times really helps unless this isn't your intention it's just what i picked up and i liked it really helps kind of solidify like this wasn't great 
yes, I did it. Yes, the monster had to die. I did kill the monster. But at the same time, this is not something I'm necessarily proud of. Um, it's it's It was a thing that had to be done. And I think if you're trying to convince Victor that killing his monster is something that has to be done, then it's working great. Um, I, I don't mind the, the penal part at all, like at all at all. I, I actually kind of enjoy it. It reminds me a little bit of the ending sequence of Great Comet, where it's really just triads, just being played over and over again, plunked in the middle of the keyboard again. Um, and it, this does develop, it builds, like we start there, um, Adding in those triads in the left hand. Oh, I should scare share my screen again. That message went away so you can see. Here we go. We're back. Nailed it. I wrote that song for you all. Great. Um, so then we jump here to having those triads, which I thought was a lovely addition to like just kind of ground us a little bit, solidify us down uh, um, more into where we are Totally. And then the the quarter notes kind of added to the pulse in a lo in a lovely way. I wasn't necessarily sure why they started where they started, but I, I have something more on that. Um but then here, like even the right hand begins to develop a bit. We we cut out some eighth notes, we kind of had this little starting and stopping. Um, then to this cascading eighth note feel instead that we kind of plant into the 16th, the crunchier chords, those bigger clusters in the left hand. Um, then switching, putting the, the chord notes up top when we get to 36 here and the 16th note running pattern, which is now ascending in the left hand. Yeah, like the, there's nothing about this that says too beginnery piano to me. Um, I actually kind of liked it. It, it was mostly like variation on a theme in a very positive way. I think that's a lovely thing to do. Can an orchestrator help you? Sure. Yeah, they, they can and would absolutely fill things out a bit more. Nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, when I'm writing my music parts, what I like to do is include, <laughs> without making the majority of the score too unplayable, I like to include as many of the colors that I'm eventually going to end up with in the score as possible as I'm writing. And then, you know, if I need to clean that up into an actual piano vocal and strip things away, that's cool. But I like to just kind of plant the seeds of what, what are the tones and colors I might want to hear, if I want to talk to an orchestrator about later on, or if I'm going to do a first orchestration pass, um, what might I want to include or build upon. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something you can talk about with them. They, orchestrators will kind of range from, they'll take exactly what you have on the page and just put that on instrumentation to people who are interested in collaborating with you and adding composition into the orchestration, um, building upon, adding, developing. So yes, that's absolutely something that they can do. Um, I do want to talk about the lyric and things a bit here, but I, again, I really like this. I think it is a pretty succinct telling of the story. Um, and again, the tone is lovely. Really, really lovely. Yeah. Great. Let's talk about it a little bit. Um, ukele dukele. So... Okay, I want to get to that later. So, baseline, da ba da ba ba talk about lyrics... Great, let's talk about lyrics and let's, I'll probably mention a little bit more about music as well. Talk about lyrics though, and also um, the convincing piece. Okay, so lyrically, and so you want to hear my story of how I came to kill the Count. It's one tale, it's one that ta tells a tale of glory, and yet it's still hard to recount. You see right there, glory doesn't necessarily say, Yes, it feels like glory, and part of the reason for that that I really enjoy is because here we are on what is essentially a B flat major chord in the uh, the left, or excuse me, in the right hand of the piano. But we're singing on the seventh of that chord, glory. So it doesn't really feel like glory because it's um, adding a delightful bit of crunch in, and yet it's still hard to recount. Um, 
nice identity there with kill the count and to recount. Um, I did wonder about that first line though. And so you want to hear my story. I assume the dialogue sets that up for us. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, or perhaps he's just an old man who's like, okay, so you want to hear my tale. Um, I don't know, but I had a question on that, but not, not a big problem. So it started back when I met Mina, who had a friend who had been a victim to a monster. She wanted me to end. I assume that what that's trying to say is who had been victim to a monster that she wanted me to end. But because of that pause in between in the way that so far the phrases, phrases have been insular in their lyric, I don't really hear that across the pause, the two and a half beat pause, um, especially because we don't have the word that in there. It's just who had been a victim to a monster. She wanted me to end. It's like, oh, did she want him to die? I, clearly not the intention, but that's what my ear took on that. And as I took my gruesome journey... Why was the journey itself gruesome? I think that the task is gruesome, but the journey? I have a question on that. I felt a fear I've never known as I made my way to Castle Dracula, which sits in the same place as Glory in the previous section, which I like because Glory, Dracula, we're kind of hammering home that there's this positive negative thing right he kills dracula that's a positive but dracula himself is not mm, not a positive thing same thing with the glory i think that's really well done uh place the sun has never shown just knowing the tale of dracula i take small issue with that that's a me thing and with anything i ever say in these uh live streams take it leave it throw it out the window but it's not that the sun has never shown on castle dracula or that it doesn't still. But uh, there's history there, right? Anyway, take it, leave it. Uh, and in the moment that I saw him with, with his pale skin, I felt the world close in around me. I knew that I must win. I knew that I must win. That one just seems like an obvious thing. And I wonder if there's something stronger to go with the winning idea than him knowing he has to win. Obviously, he set off on this adventure to kill this monster and had to therefore win. Um, But how can you kill a thing that's so obscene, not something man or beast, but something in between? That I kind of like. As he drew near, I had to think smart. Okay, we think smart. Mm, can we do something smart? Uh, there's just something awkward about that phrase. Obviously, you're putting smart there because you want to rhyme it with heart. Uh, I drove a snake right through his heart. And then uh, just to make sure that he was dead. I don't, I don't know why we're holding out the word he. You know, I wonder if uh, there's something, could be something in, and then just to make, sh uh, and then just to make sure, by the way, that's a weird scansion thing, and then to, and then just to make sure, kind of hard to sing and hear, but I wonder if we could go something along the lines of, and then to make sure that the thing was dead, like, what do we want to call him um, beside the monster? Um I don't know, but that's that's another thing to potentially look at. I swung my sword and took his head. Yes, again, very succinct. Now we get to in. Now I'm sorry, my dearest Victor, you have to run. <laughs> usually we don't say that to people. It's usually I have to run, not you have to run. Um, so that felt a little weird to me. And then you need to go kill your monster, even if you're his son. I know that son is why you put run in there, because you want to dip it up and make the rhyme happen. But I'm not convinced that Victor would be convinced simply upon hearing the tale of how Van Helsing killed Dracula. I'm not entirely sure that we've made the connection yet as to why Van Helsing's killing of Dracula equals the why for Victor killing his monster slash father. Especially because, like, with Van Helsing, he had no personal stake in it. Mina was his friend. 
as we've stated. Uh, I mean, he has a personal stake in the book, but in in so far as we've stated, it's his friend, right? So why is that such a big old driving why for him? Besides the fact there was a monster on the loose who he had to kill. So can we go deeper with a connection to a why for Van Helsing that might help connect the why for Victor so that Victor is motivated enough to then go do something that's much harder what than what Van Helsing had to do. He has to go kill his dad? Yikes. That's a big thing to convince someone of. So in terms of like the story song piece, I think your story song is working great. I think the story is there. It's succinct. It's clean. We're, we only care about the, the essentials, the basics of this story. But I think the, the piece that's missing for me is the convincing song piece, which is, give me that why. So we tell the story. Instead of going straight to, and now I'm sorry, dearest Victor, can you instead give me what this meant to Van Helsing, why it was important for him, why it was important for the world, uh, why this creature couldn't continue to live in this world, what dangers that would pose, whatever was important to Van Helsing that also might somehow connect over to Victor so that we can connect that through directly in the song, in the lyric to, don't you see, dearest Victor, I know it's your dad, but also, if you let this monster live, X, Y, Z is going to happen, and therefore you must. So that's my thought on the convincing song piece. A couple of other things I want to point out that I think are really fun in here. Um, I I enjoy <laughs> enjoy the kind of weird way that the rhymes fall on this, and so you want to hear my story of how I came to kill the Count. It's one that tells the tale of glory, and it's still hard to recount. That actually fits just crystal clear. No problems there at all, right? Um, and then we begin to change up where the lines end that rhyme. It started back when I met Mina, who had a friend. So we are, who had a friend, uh, who had been victim to a monster. Three, four, she wanted me to end. Da, 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 da. Right, it's kind of a little surprise there because we had previously set up that a rhyme is going to happen on essentially the same beats or what feels like the same strong beat feeling. But here we have who had a friend landing on three and then she wanted me to end. And as I took my gruesome journey, three, four, I felt a fear I'd never known, right? So then we're back to that journey. But then we don't rhyme here. We go to, as I made way to Castle Dracula. So we had in our first section that 1-3 rhyme and 2-4 rhyme, but we've we've cut away the 1-3 rhyme here. I wasn't mad about it. I just thought it was interesting. A place that someone's never shown. That's it's normal. Um, skin and wind sit that same way as before. And there's something else interesting in here. Oh, this one. And as he drew, uh, as he drew near, I had to think smart. Three, four. I drove a stake right through his heart. That was interesting. Again, didn't bother me, but it caught my ear for sure, even without someone th singing it. But we have think smart, whereas before we had things that were two syllables. And then we were going to wait until line three for the rhyme. We're doing a line two rhyme here instead. So now we've got think smart with that two, beat two, smart, and then stake right through his heart. Beat one. It sounds very final. Again, kind of like took me um, out of it a little bit, but not in a bad way. I didn't mind it. And then... And then just to make sure that he was dead. Again, we, we already talked about that. But I I swung a sword and took his head. Again, feels very final. Nothing wrong with that. Fine. Something else I think is interesting here. Oh, a couple things I find are interesting here. So we start the song in this D minor feel. Pardon you. Car, in case you couldn't hear that, Zoom may have canceled. Um, we start in the D minor feel, and the melody sits directly in the D minor feel, right? 
um, through. And so you want to hear my story. Then the piano shifts to a C major. And it feels like we're going to do the same thing. But what I really like is this kill the count being on that EFA is suddenly with the FA out of our C major feel. And it creates not a big amount of dissonance, but enough dissonance where it's like, oh, we're not going to stick completely within the key feeling necessarily. Well, I mean, we, we pretty much do. We stick within our key. But we're not necessarily going to match the tonality completely between the melody and the piano, which is a lot of fun. I enjoy that a lot. Um, uh, great. Sorry about that. My window just shifted. Had to get it back. Um, and then we continue to do that immediately, like I mentioned on that glory. Do, 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 do. Started back when I went, Nina. That's fun because here we are again on our C my or our D minor, but we're adding a C into we're adding our seven in. Uh, I think whenever we have the melody lifting above and out of what the chords are doing down below was most interesting to my ear. Um, and I think again, it added to that feeling of the joy versus the 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 darkness, what makes this a tough thing to do. A lot of fun in there. So I didn't want to point that out because I enjoyed that throughout the entire piece. Um, and then here's something else that's very interesting to me. It's starting on page two with these quarter notes. When the quarter notes come in, with the addition of changing where the rhymes are falling, that, to me, began to create this shift in the feeling of meter. Now, we we don't really leave 4-4 four, four except for this one measure down here where we're holding for three beats on measure 35 and then popping back into 4-4. Four, four. But for, for a little bit here, we have something that feels like we've moved out of our 4-4. Four, four. And it's because in measure 14 here, after Monster, as the quarter notes come in, we have two quarter notes on C, which are not in the chord we're playing. And we had previously been using these quarter notes, like if you look here in measure 13, as a pickup, like a bum bum, a four one sort of feel. But now we're getting four one, two, three, four, right? We're resolving into the chord with that quarter note, starting on beat two, which if you're not looking at the sheet music, feels like, wait a second, did we just change our meter for a moment? So monster, da da. She wanted me to end. She wanted me to end. And again, because of that change with end and how that's sitting versus friend, it now makes me like in my ear wonder. Wait, did we just kind of beat out? Are we shifting to a three four for a moment? But then we don't, right? She wanted me to end, and as I took my gruesome journey, and then to add to that little confusion, again, it's not a bad confusion, but to add to it, we have a change in what the eighth notes are doing as well, where we had been doing a very steady ba 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 ba. Now we're doing. Ba ta 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 then back to two four one two three four and that was a lot of fun because it threw me off a little bit. I don't I don't know if that was motivated by something in particular. So that would be a question I'd ask to you, Carson. Would be why are we doing that? Um, and is the intention to throw the listener off a little bit in terms of what the meter is doing? Um, if so, great job. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, so we do that. And then obviously you continue to play with the quarter notes a little bit. You do that same thing again down here in 2829. Then we move into that 16th note pattern with the crunching chords down below, which was a lovely little build. And like I said, I really enjoyed that pulling up into the higher octave there as we change our registration. I think it works really well as far as a build. But I thought that was cool. So I wanted to point it out. Also, you kind of set that up for us very nicely right at the top by starting us with that 5131 pattern. 5131, 5131, 5131 times two measures, 
once the vocal starts and then switch to one, three, one, five, one, three, one, five. So already you're kind of shifting where our ear is going a little bit being, which is great because uh, we want our ear refreshed a little bit when we know that we're going to be entering into a story that we already know, but we're going to be hearing it a little bit differently, but you don't want your audience to get bored. Not that they would get bored. Who doesn't love Dracula? I mean, you signed up to watch a monster musical, like, come on. But I enjoyed that as like a little seed planting for that little meter change, shifting feel stuff later on. So I also wanted to point that out as well. But yeah, I mean, on the whole, I think you did great here, Carson. I think I think you're working really nicely toward the goals you have. Um, I hope that I answered your questions here. Uh, I mainly just really desire getting the connection of the why so we can then move on. <laughs> yes, thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I see the why, yeah. The connection to the why as to how this connects to Victor and Victor killing his monster. I think that's probably for me the most interesting thing about someone recounting a story of what happened many years ago in order to provide advice to someone who's like, the why of it all? Why are we doing this? Why are we pursuing this? So that is my set of thoughts that I give unto you. As always, my friends, I know that there are several of us here live. I will stay on for a few more minutes for an Ask Me Anything. Um, but thank you, Carson. Thank you for coming uh, with a second song for us. Uh, Monster Musicals. Why not? How delightful. How fun. How silly. So if anyone has questions about anything, about the song, about other stuff, hey. Feel free to to let me know, ask the questions, pop them in, in the chat, and we can go from there. Um, other things, just so you all know, are coming up. There's some major changes happening behind the scenes of the Musical Theater Writing Collective. I'm building it out to be um, something a little bit bigger, a little bit more useful even than it already is. Because it's wonderful, don't get me wrong. I love our community. I love everything that's in there. I love our events, our bi-weekly labs, our... Uh, quarterly cabarets, our next quarterly cabaret is coming up in like, what, a little less than two weeks? No, two weeks exactly from tomorrow. Got it. Nailed it. In two weeks, we do those every three months. And then our reading series and our reading coming up. I love doing all of these things in addition to all the resources and just helping people with their shows. I mean, I lost count at the number of shows I've been helping this year once I hit two dozen. I was like, well, all right, neat. So I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> My job's the best. So uh, there are going to be more things. I'm making more robust as we uh, go along here through the spring. There will be more information about that. In fact, I'm going to have uh, a sign up. If you want to be like on the list to be the first people to hear about it, you'll be able to sign up for that as well. Um, so you can make sure you don't miss out. But yeah, so that stuff's coming up and that's fun. And I'm excited about that. Anywho... Well, I don't see any questions coming in, and I think I stalled pretty decently there. I'll give it one more minute. Um, other things, I had also been getting a number of questions recently about the next flagship course cohort when it starts. Um, thank you all for the interest. It's lovely. It's wonderful. Keep sending those applications. But the next one will start at the end of August. I will have dates relatively soon end of August, and it goes through January of 2025. Oof, I hate uttering the words 2025 this early in 2024, but that would be when the next one starts. And for those of you who are interested in that other course I was talking about, there's not a web page for it, so you're not crazy there. Um, the idea of the uh, accelerator course... Um, where you have a project, it's kind of like a mastermind meets an accountability group sort of thing. Uh, we have a six month goal, it's a, a true six months. The flagship is 20 weeks, so it's close, but this is a true six month course. That's gonna start again the next one in mid August, early mid August. So if you were interested in that, let me know. You can just write me an email. You can find my email on the website. And I'm very happy to chat with you about that if that's of interest. Cause I know a couple of people have reached out and been like, hey, is there info about this? Like. No, but we can set up a, a call and I, I can walk you through what it is, what it might look like. Plus coaching. There's that too. 
Oh, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. I do thoroughly love these live streams. I love all of you for sharing your work and for being here and being a part of this process. So with that, we'll end today's live stream. I know you all. In two weeks, I don't know if we're going to do another song feedback or if we're going to go back to an, a song analysis moment. I have some other ideas cooking as well for the live stream. So uh, stay tuned and I'll let you know. In the meantime, my friends, have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you all soon. All right. Bye.